I'd like to invite you to remain standing as I invite one of our students, Omir Hall, to join us in leading the national anthem of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. Dear land of Guyana, of rivers and plains made rich by the sunshine and lush by the rain. Set gem light and fair between mountains and seas your children salute you dear land of the free dear land of guyana to you will we give our whole mage our service each day that we live god guard you great mother and make us to be more worthy our heritage land of the free please remain standing for the lowering of the mace which is the symbol of the authority of our chancellor who is joining us virtually. Please be seated. Vice Chancellor, I take the very special pleasure in inviting you to declare this extraordinary convocation ceremony of the University of Guyana be declared. I take the most distinct, wonderful honor, privilege, and pleasure in declaring open this extraordinary convocation ceremony of the University of Guyana. Let the proceedings begin. And today, I take exception, and the and I and I deviate a little bit from the university's normal way of doing these convocations. Because you will all recognize that this is a stupendously wonderful moment for all of us. And if you will permit me some brief remarks. With humble heads, and hearts bow down. And thanks for each new day of toil. We kneel before your altar, Lord, the children of Guyana's soil. And not in vain, we'll strive to build a new Guyana great and free, a land of glory and of hope a land of love and unity. 
There are so many delights and blessings in this day, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. That this young woman who came here from us, of us, and now is adored by the world, should be here to fulfill not only our dreams of meeting her, but perhaps the highest aspirations espoused in the song that I just quoted from, the hymn for Guyana's children, written by one of our great national composers, Valerie Rodney. You, Miss Wright, are bringing to Guyana and the world your very sweet spirit, your unstinting integrity, your phenomenal talent and discipline. And most of all, you radiate, you radiate and share love. It might be said that love is Letitia. I find it especially important that you are teaching the world about the power of peace, tradition, and science through art. Your art and the art of those great writers and filmmakers with whom you have worked and those who you will work with in the future. That you have been forthright that acting, theater, and the performance arts are demanding disciplines. And they have their own histories, theories, techniques, technologies, practices, and their own high price for ultimate success. That they are not those for those who cannot do anything else. They're not for those of lesser intelligence. That artists, performers, and the creatives are not children of any lesser God. But in fact, the innate creativity is God's gift to humanity. Gifts we must support, recognize, and honor much more. And this, this morning, is the smallest thing that we could do, not only to honor you, but all of those that you represent. We must support, recognize, and honor. And everything we learn about our ancient civilizations, we must first learn through the art of those people who lived before us. And so great and sophisticated civilizations must pay attention to these aspects of, its, of their culture that are performative, for they are and can be transformative. It is a, with a profound sense of prodigiousness that we offer you the University of Guyana's highest honor, one which was accorded to only 10 others in our 60 year history. You are the 11th to receive such an honorary doctorate from the University of Guyana. In respect of the University of Ghana's artists in residence and cultural arts programs that are nascent, we hope your exemplary model will attract support and inspire many. In that regard, might I thank those who have continually supported our programs, most recently, my brother Harold Hopkinson, thank you. In particular respect to you, Ms. Wright, the university also remembers Chadwick Boseman today your brother and friend, the Black Panther, without whom maybe things might have been different. We would also like to recognize again respect, with respect to your career, the other actress from Guyana, uh, the Linden-born, New York-based Seanette Renee Wilson, who plays a member of the Wakanda elite special forces in the Black Panther films. Indeed, this is a moment to recognize those who came before you before all of us, from Bill Rogers, the first Caribbean the Guyanese to record, Edgar Mittelhalser, the first Guyanese to be published, Rudolf Dunbar, Eddie Grant, the first Guyanese to receive an honorary doctorate from us, who's an artist, Cece Pounder, Ingrid Griffith, David Dabadine, Melbin Shyboard, Amina Gafur, many others who are here and who stayed here, nourishing our roots and for their artistic blood, sweat and tears, we remember them and thank them. Yet, some like you return to us, like Dave Martins, yourself, and our present artist in residence, Henry Mutu, for a brief moment. And then there is hope 
high energy and synergy. Culture matters, the arts matter, they matter. So indeed, this is a moment of many delights, the blessings from which we hope we will see changes in the lives of others, as you have said you would wish to see. We hope that there will be a myriad of positive things that comes out of this, and we hope it, it will profoundly and positively shift the energy in our country as well as you have already begun to do. For this day and this privilege, we thank God and we extend eternal sincere gratitude to the selection panel of the University of Guyana, which presides over the special honors at the university. They had to do a lot in 24 hours. I'd like to thank everyone who made this possible. This was all put together in 24 hours. Thank you so much. We also wish to thank the Director of Music from the Ministries of Culture, Youth and Sport, the Minister of Tourism, Culture, Minister of Education, uh, uh, Quinika Waldron, uh, Ms. Wright's sister, Desia, her own special guardian angel, for providing access and supporting the request for us to have her briefly visit the university and to accept the university's award. Many thanks also to those who have pulled all the stops out to make today happen. Special thanks to our small but beautiful little angels from the nursery school this morning who uh, did their parts with aplomb. Thank you to the Early Childhood Center for making the children available. I also wish to especially thank all those people who prodded and prodded and clamored for you to come to UG and to visit uh, in those places that people felt should not be ignored. All of you who wrote me and sent me a deluge of WhatsApp messages and called me and said you must find a way to get her here, thank you for prodding me because she is. <laughs> it's, it's just marvelous. Thank you also, Leticia, for accepting our humble offering and saying yes, and for gracing this incomparable national institution with your beautiful and accomplished presence. I have been saying probably ever since I saw the Black Panther six times, and I say it again, when I think of my country, Guyana, I cannot help but think of Wakanda, minerally wealthy, small, secluded, verdant, with a powerful heritage, and brilliant, beautiful people. It is perhaps not an accident that you have been born in the land of the mighty Romaima, the home of the mightiest single drop fall in the world, or the country which now carries the largest, the second largest virgin forests in the world. The University of Guyana cherishes you. May you continue to be blessed with all good things. And again, as I close, I quote Rod Rodway, I care not though their wealth be great, their scenery be grand, but none so fair as can compare with my own native land. God bless Wakanda, Wakanda forever, Guyana forever, Yuji forever. Ladies and gentlemen, in the sixth year of our history, the University of Guyana's 11th Vice Chancellor, the first female. Let us give her a big round of applause. Please. Thank you. I feel particularly privileged, honored, but extremely humbled by the opportunity afforded to me to guide 
the proceedings of this extraordinary special convocation. Vice Chancellor, Chancellor of the University of Guyana, Professor Edward Green, that is joining us virtually. Distinguished, Honorable David Lamy, Envoy Extraordinary, Extraordinaire, University of Guyana Council, that is joining us virtually. Members of the University Council, Vice Chancellor and members of the Senior Management Team, Your Excellency, the High Commissioner of India to the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and other members of the Diplomatic Corps, faculty and staff of the University of Guyana, students, members of the media. And I've left the best for last, our distinguished honorary. Vice Chancellor, it is now my special pleasure to invite our distinguished Chancellor, Professor John Edward Greed, to bring some brief remarks via a video recording, and I ask that we welcome him appropriately as we queue up the video remarks being delivered by our esteemed chancellor. It is with extreme pleasure and pride that I participate in this special convocation ceremony and bring congratulations from the Council of the University to you, Letitia Michelle Wright, the new Black Panther. We celebrate your highly acclaimed performances in the global theater arts. We salute you as much for the excellence for which you have been overwhelmingly honored as for bringing glory to this land of Guyana and for being such a beacon of light and hopefulness for the youth of Guyana, especially young girls to emulate. We thank you for your graciousness in agreeing to share your precious time with the University of Ghana community and friends, not only those at the George Walcott Lecture Theater at the Turkine campus in Greater Georgetown, but many others who will view this momentous occasion around the globe, thanks to UG's online capabilities. Letitia, your extensive filmography is so spectacular. It displays your multidimensional leading roles in films and television productions and numerous distinguished awards and nominations. It is a tribute to your uniquely creative talent. What a legacy is evolving by one so young, which normally takes many in your profession a lifetime, three times your age to attain. This is truly the kind of day we dream of. A day when Letitia Wright entered our lives in real time like a phoenix rising. Best wishes, Letitia, for massive success and blessings as you continue to inspire the world in the years ahead. I thank you. With your permission, allow me to invite the Honorable David Lamy, Envoy Extraordinaire of the University of Ghana Council to bring greetings via video 
let us welcome in person with a big round of applause the greetings that will come from the Honorable David Rand. As the envoy extraordinaire of the Council of the University of Guyana, it is my great pleasure to congratulate Letitia Wright for this award of an honorary doctorate. I remember many years ago, a few years after Letitia and her family arrived in the UK, um, spending some time with you in my constituency. It has been so heartwarming and a complete source of joy to see your career flourish uh, in the way that it has over those years since. This award recognises your talent and your beacon of hope, really, to so many Guyanese people, both in Guyana and across the world. You are an absolute beacon for Guyanese young people, particularly. And ex your acceptance of this award reflects back on the University of Guyana, its staff, its administration, and of course, present and future students. Thank you for all that you have done. I know that this trip that you have made to Guyana has been a very, very special um, homecoming. I'm so pleased that you've been able uh, to make it. I hope that you will continue to consider Guyana a very, very special home. We are so proud of you and I wish you the very best over the coming months and years. May your career continue to flourish and may God bless everything that you do. Congratulations, Dr. Wright. Vice Chancellor, William Shakespeare reminded us in his classic work, Twelfth Night, if music be the food of love, play on. Vice Chancellor, it is a special pleasure that we expose one of our own talent as I invite, with your permission, the performance by Oslin Rose from the Faculty of Social Sciences who will treat us to how great thou art. And this is performed by one of our own. Let us welcome this musical performance appropriately. Great 
Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great the word, how great the That God He served not sparing sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on that cross. My burdens gladly bury. He bled and died to take away my sin. And take me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration Thank you, and by whatever name we call him, indeed, how great thou art. Vice-Chancellor, with your permission, we will now move to the conferral of the honorary degree on Miss Letitia Michelle Wright. And in accordance with our procedures, Vice Chancellor, and with your permission, it is now my pleasure of inviting our orator, Mr. Al Crichton, from the Faculty of Education and Humanities to read the citation for the honorary Miss Letitia Michelle Wright. Let us invite Mr. Crichton appropriately.
Beauty is truth. Truth, beauty. That is all ye know on earth and all ye need to know. Vice Chancellor, how often have you heard the term stellar performance? And what you might have thought, does it really mean? The truth is, Vice Chancellor, it is, the truth is, Vice Chancellor, that it is not the rarest of utterances in the English language. And by its very frequency of use, not by any measure the most profound. But you expect of us in these hallowed halls of academia to be guided by truth. And to tell the plain truth, stellar performance is a cliche, hackneyed, overused, and easily reached for in the common currency of ordinary, of ordinary parlance. That is why, esteemed Vice Chancellor, when challenged with the task we have before us this day, we turned to the poets whose thoughts and language supersede all that in that in the to find words worthy of our subject because the poets ask who canst thou express a flowery tale more sweetly than our rhyme a flowery tale we have dear vice chancellor but lack the rhyme we lack the linguistic power to dress our subject in exquisite robes sufficiently worthy so that is why we resort to the plain truth expressed in the common currency of ordinary parlance vice chancellor i present leticia michelle wright Actress extraordinaire, doyen of the screen, both cinema and television, student and exponent of the art of film, stage actress, intellectual and cultural ambassador, adored and acclaimed from Hollywood to the London West End, a truly accomplished exemplar of the international motion picture industry. The University of Guyana wishes to recognize her for a veritable stellar performance. For the sum total of what she has achieved in the difficult and influential field of motion picture, of what she has contributed to the image and reputation of the nation of Guyana, her track record and impressive list of her achievements, both by its length and in magnitude, her stage and screen performances, her universal recognition represent her as having accomplished a stellar performance. But Vice Chancellor, the fact that she has broken through barriers and scaled such heights at a very young age speaks to not only the meteoric rise in her career, but to certain qualities in her attitudes, character, and approach to the work ethic. As if to, be, as if to belie her outstanding credits, fame and fortune, Letitia is as light and unimposing in physical frame as she is colossal and commanding in intellectual thought. Profound ideas and unbelievable humility. She is a remarkable exemplar in a quest for self-discovery as a prerequisite for the heights of achievement through dedicated work 
She believes in humility as a strategy for success and the power it wields in a conquest over the superficial sound and fury of arrogance, conceit, and pretentiousness. She is a seeker after truth as a strategy for success and this beauty it lends to the dedicated pursuit of creative endeavor. Beauty is truth, truth, beauty. That is all ye know on earth and all ye need to know. And yet, Vice Chancellor, there can be no definition at the highest pinnacle of beauty than the word stellar. It is, at the, it is of the stars, the brightest fires in the universe and symbols of spectacle. It represents the highest reach of human ambition and the brilliance of accomplishment. There is no better word to describe the triumphs of Letitia Wright. She was born in Guyana and moved to the United Kingdom at the age of eight. At secondary school, she was enticed into drama in the usual way and seriously launched her career as an actress in 2011 with roles in television series and a TV movie. She simultaneously made her film debut with a part in a movie called Victim, closely followed by My Brother the Devil in 2012 and another TV film in 2014. She felt it necessary to pursue formal studies in acting, which she did as a at a prestigious college and has made the study of the performing arts a consistent habit ever since. She studies each role and learns from each character and credits this as crucial in her success. And there were several such roles and many cinematic appearances in a career that so far has been not only prolific, but marked by excellence. There has been as many nominations and an impressive number of prestigious awards. Among the most prominent victories are NAACP Image Awards in an, uh, as an outstanding supporting actress in 2019 and 2022. BAFTA Awards for a Rising Star in 2019 a Screen Action Guild Award for Outstanding Performance in a Motion Picture, and a Teen Choice Award for a Choice Sci-Fi Movie Actress in 2018. Her most important movies along the way have included Urban Rhythm in 2015, which opened the gate for her in Hollywood, Ready Player One, in which she worked with the great Steven Spielberg in 2018, Avengers Infinity War in 2018, Avengers Endgame in 2019, and Death on the Nile in 2022. But the most outstanding and those that provided her with not only the greatest challenges, but the most spectacular success were the Silent Twins in 2022, in which she played June Gibbons, Black Panther in 2018, and Black Panther Wakanda Forever in 2022, in which she created her most famous role as Shuri, the Princess of Wakanda, and afterwards as the Black Panther. Black Panther thrilled millions as a sensational mixture of sci-fi, superhero movie, a work in the latest postmodernist form 
of the exploitation of cinematic technology, magical realism, and post-colonialism. It touches on the delicate balance of world superpowers, the brink and the unimaginable dangers of war using the most devastating weapons of modern science. It is a moral tale of scrupulous, humane, and concerned leaders holding the safety of the world in their hands. It is post-colonial in that such conscientious leaders are found in an African nation that, unknown to skeptics in the United Nations, is the real superpower and holds the answer to world peace and prosperity. Vice Chancellor, I present Letitia Wright, whose role in the Black Panther movies is interesting to both feminism and post-colonialism because a young African woman holds in her hands, controls and values incredible, incredible scientific skills, the most annihilating weaponry and the power of healing. I pause to give you time, Vice Chancellor, to recover from your awestruck astonishment. <laughs> In encountering such talented, brilliant, accomplished, and yet so humble a young lady as Letitia. Then, when you have recovered your dignified composure, <laughs> I will request of you, esteemed Vice Chancellor, that you invoke the authority vested in you by the Council of the University of Guyana and confer upon Letitia Michelle Wright the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. Our orator, Mr. Al Crichton. A big round of applause to him, please. please Vice Chancellor, I now request you, our esteemed and distinguished leader of this university during its historic 60th year of existence to come forward and to confer on the honorary the Doctor of Laws. <laughs> Chancellor, distinguished members of the audience. It gives me the greatest pleasure on behalf of the university by the powers vested in me to confer on Mr. Tisha Michel Wright, artist extraordinaire, the honorary doctor of letters from the University of Guyana, honoris causa. It is my you know, pleasure to invite the Vice Chancellor and the Deputy Vice Chancellors to appropriately robe the honorary with the academic regalia and then to present the certificate and plaque.
Vice Chancellor, I now invite you to present this plaque, which reads, the University of Guyana, honorary Doctor of Letters of Arts, presented to Letitia Michelle Wright, a Guyanese Christian of extraordinary gifts and talents. This noble and prestigious degree conferred in its 60th year this February 1, 2023, we cherish you as a blessing, Vice Chancellor. And my tie, with the permission of the assembly, break with the tradition again and invite three young people who I know Letitia is young and loves young people to share this moment. Might I invite the student president, ex, uh, past president and the valedictorian for this year. They should be on the stage <clears throat> to come forward and help present this quickly. Vice Chancellor, I am blessed and I am honored on your behalf, on behalf of the entire community, to invite our honorary Dr. <laughs> Letitia <laughs> Michelle. so that you don't miss this historic moment. Dr. Letitia Michelle Wright. <laughs> to deliver her acceptance speech. Dr. Wright, I invite you to join me at the podium. If you know me very well, when there are big moments um, of honor that happens in my career or my life, I tend, um, I tend not to write a speech. Um, this was uh true of of me in 2019 when i sat next to my father at the bafta um awards which is a very prestigious award and um i remember making my way to the baftas and i said god fill my mouth with whatever you want me to say if it is your will for me to win and the moment they said my name, I hugged my father and I'm passing Viola Davis and I'm passing Spike Lee and I'm thinking to myself, what am I gonna say? And if you've ever seen me, uh, I was in an all white suit and, and, and if you've ever heard that speech that was literally um, deposited into my spirit from the Lord. And I just wanted to share something that he placed in my heart to share and I feel like he's doing that right now. So I just wanna begin by honoring not only the vice chancellor and, and everybody that came together to, to do this for me and to honor me. Um, I just wanna also honor my father and my grandmother who's here. I want to honor my mom, who's back in England, my family, my siblings, 
my aunties and uncles who are also here in this country and my aunt Tessa in the United States and my cousins, just all my family members and everybody who has supported me, my sister Daisha, my beautiful friend Hayden. These are all people who have stood behind me and have nurtured me with love. I come from very humble family. Uh, my grandfather, uh, Mr. Mr. Wrights, it is an S at the end. <laughs> um, so if you know, you know. And um, I come from a very uh, beautiful family that have always loved me. I grew up in good intent in the West Bank of, of Guyana. And I was that little girl that went from house to house and no matter what I wanted, Sunny D, ice cream, just someone to, to talk to. My compound was filled with love and family and that's all I know. So as you see me, you may expect someone from Hollywood to have a certain way of being or carry themselves in a certain way. And as you see me, you see humility and that's literally from my family and that's literally from God. And I don't know any other way else to be. <laughs> than to be humble. Because I truly believe there's a particular scripture in the Bible that speaks about the wedding banquet. And I've been meditating on that for the past few days. And Jesus speaks of when you are invited to the wedding banquet, do not take the high seat. Take the lowly seat and wait for the person who's in charge to honor you. <laughs> who's been given the responsibility of honoring you to say, hey, why are you sitting in the lowly seat? Please come forth to the high seat. And I carry that with me in my career. I carry that with me in my life. And I want to share that with you today. That no matter where you are going, no matter what your path is, please do it with humility. And trust that God will exalt you when it's time. I always waited for my moment. If you know me, you know, <laughs> especially from yesterday's performance, um, I visited beautiful schools and there was one place in particular we all gathered i think it was about 30 something schools it was beautiful and they reenacted my childhood to the t <laughs> the long boots and everything i had the little black panther next to me giggling he said why is that girl wearing long boots <laughs> i said i don't know i was laughing and she was beginning her, her, her scene i thought i don't know Lo and behold, she was representing me. <laughs> and those moments really came back to me, being a young girl and, and practicing my art when no one could see. Going to the UK and not having enough to go on holiday or do the other things that the kids did, but I stayed with a little laptop in my room and watched movies. And I would print off the scenes and I would practice them in my room and no one would see. No one would see me practicing my American accent or my African accent or just looking myself in the mirror, believing that I could do it, making myself vision boards that sometimes I would rip up when life would knock me down or knock my family down. You would not believe the obstacles we have overcome to even be here. It was not, it was not given to us in a silver spoon. We worked very hard. I watched my parents go from job to job or my grandma, work very hard to send things home for us and help us to just know that we would never be in want 
she would give her last to us before we would ever need. So this young girl with these family members working so hard and this, this feeling of, I can make it one day. I don't know what's inside of me, what this acting thing keeps pulling me to, but I can make it one day. I practiced and I had vision boards and I prayed and sometimes I got angry and sometimes I fell into depression and sometimes I didn't pick myself up and my mom would come in my room and say, Tish, you could do this. Or my dad would come and say, please, if there's one thing you do, do this with excellence and we're behind you. And then the opportunity comes, doors start to open and you see that preparation meets opportunity. And I was prepared for those auditions. Yes, they wanted a white girl to play Ellie Maynard in Hol Holby City, but that black girl from Guyana walked in. <laughs> That black girl with her skin and her, her little accent that seeps through and the hair that God blessed her with and the eyes and the, and, the, and the personality that God blessed me with walked into those rooms and said, I belong here. I deserve an opportunity too. And for some reason, God would open the doors of their hearts and I would have favor that the way they wrote that script and intended for that character to be would change because I walked in and I walked in with God and I walked in with purpose and that continued to happen throughout my career and in 2015 comes I think I'm on top of the world I think everything is worked out and planned for me, but God had other plans. He saw a young girl who, yes, I had dreams and yes, I have purpose, but he saw a young girl that could, could go into the depths of depression by chasing something that was not tangible that was not real and I wanted acting for the wrong reasons and he confronted me with this reality why do you want acting I want to be loved I want to be accepted I want to be successful and he taught me a very important lesson about the lowly seat and about humility and about purpose so he stripped it away he told me to give up acting why are you telling me to give up acting? I have two solid roles, one with Nicole Kidman, one with uh, these famous Hollywood actresses right at my feet. Why are you telling me to give it up? Because I want your heart. Because when I have your heart, it cannot be tainted by what the world has to offer and it will stay pure. So I went on this journey to find myself and find God. I went on this journey for true self-acceptance and love within my own heart for my own self not by what anyone will validate and tell me that i could be but what god has told me i could be so i went on that journey and i fell in love with god i found peace my mental health was improving my joy was back the meaning of my name leticia is joy my dad picked it shouts out to my dad And as I was in my room praying, just filled with so much joy, like I finally found peace because I have a spiritual connection and I, I just feel good about my life. God comes knocking. It's time to go back to acting. Are you crazy? You just told me to leave, man. Is, is what you're doing. <laughs> God, what are you doing? God said, I have your heart now and it's in a safe space. It's in a safe space where whatever you ask me to do, it's gonna come from purity, not because you need validation from them. It's because you want purpose. Every role that you pick 
moving forward from this point will be filled with even more purpose and even more impact because I'm here, I dwell inside of you. So as I'm praying in my mother's room and, and praying in my own room in my house, I call my agents again, who I told I was going into retirement. <laughs> How can we help you? Okay, I am gonna return to acting. And this year was 2016. From this moment on, every moment of an audition, of a script, of an audition uh, that I was blessed to have, I did it with God. I booked Humans, a TV series. I booked, this is not my phone. Who's this one? <laughs> I ain't getting in trouble. I booked uh, Ready Player One, a small scene, very small scene. Got to meet Steven Spielberg. I booked The Commuter. Got to play alongside Liam Neeson. And then I thought that was it for me, I'm good. I said, thank you, Jesus. I got a little money in my pocket. I'm gonna go off, have some Jesus time. And he said, no, there's something else. And as I was on the set of Humans, I got this strange email saying we want you to audition for a project the role that they masked it under was called sarita and she was talking to the queen of a country saying that her brother is uh going forth to fight for the throne and she feels that she could fight for it too i said i've never seen a black woman written like this before so I didn't know what I was getting into, but I trusted God and I told the truth with that tape. And that tape went all the way to Hollywood and came back and they gave word. I think this is Black Panther. I said, Black Panther? I don't know about Marvel movies. I don't know about comic books, but this role seems very interesting. Nevertheless, I tried to forget about it, but in my prayer closet, God would literally torment me about it. Pray about Black Panther and ask for it. I said, God, I don't know what to do about this. I kept knocking on my door, pray and ask. And I prayed and I asked and I just surrendered. I said, God, if there's something in this Black Panther movie that's going on, then let your will be done. I sent another tape. And then one day in my prayer room, I heard this very clear voice. And if you have a relationship with God, he speaks in different ways. You just have to find a way that matches with yours and, and how he communicates with you. But he said, I'm about to give you a blessing. I'm about to give you the role of Shuri in Black Panther. I literally came out of my prayer closet and said, someone, I'm hearing voices, I need to go see a doctor because that was not God. <laughs> He said, I'm gonna give you a few signs. One of those signs is that you're gonna to go to Los Angeles. And then he gave me more details about other things that I needed to look out for. But he said, before you do, you have to tell someone, <laughs> you have to go to your agent's office and tell them that you just booked the role of Shuri in Black Panther before you get on the plane. I said, you're crazy. There's a few people that he's done this to that I know personally, Malachi Kirby, Toby Bakare. Those are my two good brothers in the Lord. And he spoke to them in times past and, and told them that Malachi Kirby would be the new Kunta Kente in Roots. And he called the agent and he told them and it was true. So I said to God, I'm not Malachi. I ain't doing that. He said, you have to, because it's an extension of faith that what I've told you is going to become reality. So I did it. I sat down with my agent and I told him at the time that I'll be the new Shuri in Black Panther. And I don't know what this means for me. And he looked at me and he had faith. So I got on a plane. I met Chadwick Boseman. I met Ryan Coogler. And in that moment when I met Chadwick, I knew he was going to be my brother. There's nothing that you could tell me that would separate me from this belief that he was my brother. There was something about him. 
Later on, I found out that he told Ryan, she could be my people. I don't have a sister, but she could be my sister. And she's very skilled at what she does. That's my sister. Please stop auditioning for people. I say all of this to say the journey was not easy getting to that moment. I remember when I finished my audition process and I went away and I stayed in London for like two weeks and I wasn't hearing a call back about Black Panther. And I said to God, if you changed your mind on it, that's okay. I still honor you. I still love you. I'm still here to be used. I remember the day I got the call and they told me that I booked the role of Shuri in Black Panther and I screamed at the bus, stuff, uh, the bus uh, uh, station, yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus. And I got on that, uh, that bus and I tapped my Oyster card and I thought I could never get on a bus again. <laughs> and as the years went by and as God was able to use my talent, I always made it very, very known to everybody in Hollywood and every interviewer where I'm from. This is country called Guyana. No, it's not Ghana, it's Guyana. <laughs> Please, don't confuse the two. They're both beautiful countries. I love Ghana, I just came back from there. But I really took the opportunity to highlight my country because this country is a part of where I'm from. This country is in my bloodline. I go home and there's pepper pot and bread. I go home, there is roti, dal roti, this is my favorite. I go home and there is Guyana in the very fabric of all that I do and, and all that I am. So in a way, I have not been home, but home has not left me. So as you guys have come together, as you all have come together to honor me today, I just wanted to share a little bit of my testimony and a little bit of the way God has maneuvered uh, his wonderful blessings in my life. And I accept this, this honor. And as I continue to journey, journey on in, in my career and in my path and whatever God has for me to do, um, I just wanna thank you for your love and support. And as you love me, I love you. Um, as you're proud of me, I'm proud of you too, Guyana. I know that there is more for us to do and I know that we can all work together for the good and the empowerment of our country. Um, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God, for this honor. Thank you. Guyana forever. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. Just be seated. Vice Chancellor, we accept that acceptance speech. <laughs> and our testimony resonated in the words of St. Augustine in his classic work, City of God, when he said the entire historical process is the working out of God's will for mankind. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, the first presentation is from the Guyanese Languages Unit here at the University of Guyana. I don't know if you know, we have a Creole, they've created a Creolese alphabet and some other documents. So Ms. Charlene Wilkinson hands over on, on their behalf. Shall I just go? Yes, yes, go. Uh, Valedictorian, please come, and the student president, come up quickly. You. Okay, next, student president and valedictorian, come quickly. <laughs> Which one is hers? <laughs> oh. 
Okay, next, next, next. Thank you guys, next, come on. Okay, so now I have a bunch of stuff. I'm just gonna hand it all over at once. <laughs> uh, um, two of these are for, one is for your sister, Desia, who is your guardian angel. And one is for the other Guyanese actress in New York. I don't know how you're going to get it to her. Well, we, we think she's in New York. Next time you make another film, you could give her. <laughs> we don't know how to get her. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and everything else is for you. So we're just going to hand everything over and you figure it out or we'll write you. <laughs> Thank you kindly, Vice Chancellor. And Dr. Wright from the East. Dr. Wright from the East came three gifts. From the South, many are coming. We'll have the Saxophonist now, Damien Lane, student, the UG College of Medical Science. Vice Chancellor, I now invite you to declare this congregation dismissed. Remain standing as we allow the party on stage to depart. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of this solemn, be beautiful occasion. I now declare the congregation, the congregation dismissed. Thank you. I